I think that a very important part of uh, Krishna's message to Arjuna can be found here on uh, page 54 when he says that uh, re the reward, reward of all action is to be found in enlightenment. Right here. Uh, that is a very important thing to say, I think, in terms of his, not only his message to Arjuna, but why he should be, why he should fight, but the ultimate philosophical message of this book. Uh, it is a certain idea of what the purpose of a human life is. <clears throat> there are all sorts of things that we, we get wrapped up in, uh, in our lives. They are human things. Uh, making money finding love, uh, getting milk from the store, winning the war, et cetera, et cetera. And to some degree, those things have to be dealt with, but they have to be dealt with with a certain amount of detachment because the real purpose of your life and my life and every human life is enlightenment, a certain type of knowledge, a certain type of understanding of the true nature of reality is actually quite crucial. Um, you know, ultimately, if we talk about maybe the more particulars of the religion, we're, we're trying to break the cycle of birth and death. We're trying to reach nirvana. We're trying to reach this other state, and that is a state of enlightenment. It's a state of a certain type of knowledge. It's not about achieving this or that through action. Uh, everything that we do needs to be focused on that. That is quite something, because as we as we see the truth of the truth that the possession of which would be enlightenment, it's not a truth about any particular of the world. Not anything that we could know through our senses is is really unimportant. What we're trying to know ultimately is Atman, which is ourselves, and that self is not you or me this particular human being at this age, at this time, engaged in this activity. No, it's a timeless self and a timeless truth that we're looking for. Uh, just as he goes on, those illumined souls who have realized the truth, those illumined, those enlightened souls, those souls who have seen the light, and they've realized the truth, they've realized that truth is a timeless truth. It's not really a human truth it's bigger than you and me and it's what ultimately is the nature of god the nature of reality the nature of krishna and our true nature you know there's the self that we know what they call the manifest self the self that can be sensed touched but then there's the underlying atman which connects us up with the world soul you might say and that's the one that we really have to know. And that's not going to be known through making money and finding love and going, getting milk at the store. That's going to be found through a contemplation of reality. And that reality is not the reality of the senses. It's a reality that can only be known through the mind and only be known through contemplation. Uh, so... This is really quite something, I think, and uh, quite a message for this man, Arjuna, who is wrapped up in his feelings. He's wrapped up in his, his um, discordant and conflicting feelings about what he should do in this battle. He has a duty as a warrior, but he has love as a human being for other human beings, which makes him very, very averse to hurting them, which is all good. And there's no reason you should hurt somebody for its own sake. That would be terrible. But ultimately, he's saying to Arjuna, you're, you're a soldier, and this is war, and soldiers fight in wars. That's your social duty. Go ahead and do it with a clear conscience, because ultimately, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter who wins the war. It doesn't matter how this turns out. Just just do it with with disinterest. Do it out of duty, and don't worry about the outcome. And that shows, if you're worried about the outcome, that shows that you're not seeing reality clearly. Because if you saw reality clearly, you'd see that the outcome didn't matter. It's it's getting closer to a knowledge of your true self, and therefore a knowledge of, of reality itself, 
which is really important. So this work is a work, in a certain way, a standard work of metaphysics, recognizable to a Western philosopher's eye um, about what is truly real. And what is truly real is not what can be seen with the eyes or heard with the ears. It's only by what can be contemplated with the mind. That is a, a familiar, basic kind of idealist metaphysics, but it's very personal in the Bhagavad Gita. That is, it's one man talking to his friend, the God, but one man, Arjuna, who is having this revealed to him, and this is going to change his whole view of himself and how he should live his life. It's, it's an incredibly powerful personal statement or personal journey as well as being a general metaphysics. <laughs>